Hi guys, it's Cindy Leach, your Polymer Clay Tutor, and today I'm going to give you a tour of my studio and talk a little bit about organizing your craft space into zones. Now, it doesn't really matter whether you have a tiny little uh, workspace like your kitchen table or you have a super giant one like a whole separate building. If you have a lot of craft supplies, you need to organize them and keep them in uh, in a way that you can get access to them and then also you can get them put away properly after you're done. Otherwise you run into issues like buying the same product over and over because you didn't realize you had it and that kind of thing. So what I wanted to do is a, a bunch of you have been requesting to see my whole studio and a while ago I showed you and it was crazy messy but I have done a little bit of organizing it's still not absolutely perfect yet but it's good enough to show you um, how it's set up and I mean I'm functioning in it so it must be set up well enough for me so what I like to do is set it uh, a area up into different zones. Now you wouldn't store your um, blender in your bedroom and you wouldn't have your house coat in the kitchen. And so you need to think that way when you're, you've got your uh, craft supplies and your studio set up. So separate your areas into usable zones. So my first zone that I use the absolute most is the one that you guys see regularly and this is my work zone. Here within just sitting at my table, I've got my um, uh, surface I can work on, my pasta machine, my uh, polymer clay tools are right within reach, my jewelry making tools are right close by, and then this wall of drawers, which I absolutely love and couldn't live without, have the things that I use the most in them. So I've got my uh, Primo clay in little drawers and every single color is there. I've got my studio, uh, no, it's not studio, it's the souffle clay is here. I've got canes, my all my polymer clay canes here. I've got a few extra drawers that I can add more as I build those up. There's beads, there's findings, all kinds of other gemstone beads and that kind of stuff. So when I'm working on a piece of jewelry, I really don't have to go far. I've got everything within reach. Now, just a little bit out of reach, but close by is all of my paints. So up here, I've got my different paints and um, finishes. So they're all sitting up here, my Sculpey, um, uh, liquid Sculpey and that uh, the Bacon Bond and the poly, uh, the Kato Poly Paste and all that kind of stuff is up here. There's also, you know, I've got jars of marbles and they look kind of pretty. So I've just got them sitting there in the same kind of area and stuff like that. There's also always some little knickknacks here or there and baskets and bins and things. Now right around the corner here, another area I spend most of my time in is my publishing area. So I've got my computer here. This is where I write my blogs, uh, do web research, communicate with you guys, answer questions, that kind of stuff is all happening right here. And so if I'm actually working on something, I can just sort of spin around and go back to the computer. It's all just within arm's reach. Um, also in this area, in this cabinet, I'm not going to go into any of the cabinets or drawers too much today, but in this one here, I have office supplies, books and our, um, you know, manuals and that kind of stuff is in there. I have a bunch of knickknacks and kind of neat old funky, um, uh, antique -y things up here with there's a typewriter and a bin of ribbon and that kind of stuff is all there. Now over here, I've got... This isn't ideal because I still could do some more uh, sorting, but at least the things are in zones. So in this zone, I have a lot of inks. I've got inks along in these little trays here. Um, I've got all my uh, Adirondack inks and my Vintage inks are here, all in these little bins. I've got uh, spray inks and stencils in those trays, glitters, that kind of stuff. In here, I've got some more um, inks. Uh, I've got, oh, little ink pads and uh, Gilder's Paste and uh, Inca Gold. That kind of stuff is all in this drawer. This drawer here has some rubber stamps. This is where I could use some more organizing because I have some rubber stamps here, some rubber stamps over there and another spot. So I need to redo this tower a bit. 
in the drawers below it are a bunch of junk jewelry, broken antiques jewelry, things that I can use for jewelry making. That's also something I should probably work a little better into some zones, but at least it's in a general contained area. And when I'm looking for inks or jewelry, I know exactly where to come. Now this wall of bins here, Doug and I picked up these bins quite a few years ago at Walmart. They were the three drawer bins with wheels on the bottom. Um, so what we did was we took the wheels off and stacked them. So now they're six deep and just made a whole wall of them. And in here are craft supplies that uh, they're sort of on the random side. You don't wanna throw them out if you're a mixed media person or if you have kids, but you don't really want them hidden away either. Otherwise you're never gonna find them again or ever use them. So there are things like in this drawer, there's just like little short pieces of ribbon. Um, this drawer has feathers in it. So, you know, if I'm looking for a feather, this drawer has the feathers in it. If I find a feather, I put it in that drawer and it just keeps it pretty contained. Um, there's a drawer of corks and there's a drawer of crayons and there's a drawer of, uh, you know, yarn and that kind of stuff. So the craft supplies are there. The more office -y type craft supplies are here. So I've got pens in here, you know, rulers in there scissors in there, you know, that kind of stuff. So I have those sort of zoned out. I have my music stuff here. I have this cute little shopping cart. I don't know where it came from, but it's filled with CDs. I really should switch over to put my uh, phone on and do use MP4s, but I haven't, gotten that, haven't done that yet. Now here is my oven baking zone. I used to have this closer and on my work surface, but when I bought this new oven, it's a lot bigger. It was blowing, it's a convection oven, so it was blowing the smell into my face and it was a bit of an issue. So now I have it way over here and it's a good spot because it's on top of a metal cabinet and it is um, out of the way, but all my baking tools that I need are here. So I have a bead rack here this is a new bead rack I'm testing, so I, ha I haven't talked about that yet, and we'll talk about that later. It's from the Lucy um, uh, Clay people. This is, uh, I've got my oven thermometer, my little trays of uh, baking soda and um, corn starch that I like to bake in. I just keep my oven baking rack inside here with the lid. Oh, and this little red strip, it's just a silicone strip oven guard and it's going to keep me from burning myself because I've been burning myself lately <laughs> in the oven so I'm um, getting too hasty burning myself so that's what that red strip is if you're curious also on the top here is um, my rock tumbler that I use for polishing uh, larger batches of round beads and that kind of thing and all the little um, I have little containers of the substrate in the back there um, that I use in the tumbler. So it's all right there and I don't have to look for it. It's right with the tumbler and I can leave this tumbler running in this area and it, it's a, a good spot for it. In the, this, this metal thing, drawers are great. Uh, I'd love to paint it a wonderful turquoise or something sometime, but uh, that is a project for another day. But these drawers are really sturdy and can take a lot of weight. I've got kind of random things. It's another thing I would like to resort at some point. But I've got clays, like my uh, Kato clay. I don't use it as much. It's right in this area, but I do need it. So it's not in my everyday, right at the counter there. Um, I've got extra Primo clay in the two ounce bricks all lined up in here. I also have my one pound bricks in here because they don't fit in my tiny plastic drawer. So I just hunk, chop a, a hunk off and put it in my drawer. I keep things like, uh, where are they? All my color recipe sample chips in bags here. And you can tell I have done hundreds and hundreds of color recipes. They're all in little bags hung on a, um, a little sh uh, shower hook and I keep each volume together, or each tens of volumes, I put them together. So that's what those drawers are full. There's some tools, different things. There's even a drawer full of hinges and stuff. So um, that's all contained there. 
I think at one point, uh, Doug and I were counting, I think I have over 500 drawers in this 10 by 10 foot studio. <laughs> so drawers are really handy. Another thing I have here is my, um, this uh, old dress form. It's a vintage one, it's pink. It was my grandmother's and uh, I have my lab coat sitting on it and uh, so that I have it ready for the uh, PCT test lab videos, ready to go. Now this rack, it's kind of tucked in the corner of this bin thing. Uh, it's a new addition because I was starting to run out of space. Uh, with all the new products that I test on a regular basis, I'm running into space issues where I can't, I don't want to um, go put it in the, its proper location yet because I haven't tested it or I have, um, I haven't tried it yet or demoed it yet. So I've got on the top here some stuff I'm demoing or um, testing, some little test strips and they're waiting out their time to make sure that uh, everything's gonna be fine with it. And then in these drawers are the products of that I'm going to be demoing soon. And it takes me some time, you know, I have to get to know the product. So sometimes I'll have a product for, uh, you know, uh, several weeks before it actually gets filmed and sent out to you guys to see what I've done. So there's, uh, that's what that tower is all about. Now in this zone is my books and I've got uh, magazines and knickknacks and all kinds of neat stuff in this thing. It's a little unruly at this point. I'm really could use some more space. So um, when Willow moves out, I'm stealing her room. It's bigger and the walls are straight and I will be able to get a lot more stuff more organized in it, but it is still functioning quite well. I have a rack up here that I have, it's a ornament holder. It looks like a tree and I've just got to load it up with all my jewelry that I've kept for myself. You know, I should be wearing some of the stuff I make, so I keep at least one piece of every, all the different tutorials. I have some antiques in here. This is an old sewing machine of my grandmother's, an old treadle. Um, and, you know, it just sort of le lends well to the crafting theme and all that. Right around the side here, I have this new kind of a, it's a little bit hard for you to see, but it's a rack. It's a slot wall rack and uh, I got it at Michael's. I quite like it, but I can hold all my um, cording um, and chain here. I've got my wire and different, um, this is mostly just cording and that kind of thing, a few findings and stuff and a few seed beads. And then on the back of my door, I painted a piece of cork or uh, what a, I don't know, the whole board, <laughs> whatever those, that board is called, pegboard. And I've got a few hooks. I would, I want to uh, redo this a little bit, but I can't put too much on it because it bangs into the cupboards and stuff. So uh, that's how I've worked that. And then inside these cupboards are things that I really don't want to look at, like uh, bottles of uh, acetone and stuff like that. I don't use them that often, but they're there. They should be in the studio because that's where they get used. There's some old antique uh, um, suitcases and things that I've got little boxes and things stored in. In a cupboard here, I've got all of my, um, uh, a lot of scrapbooking stuff, um, paper and uh, Sizzix die cut stuff. Someday I'll go in there. I've got some different uh, organizing things. And then this tower of paper and cutters and things that are close by to the table. So that is a good kind of, oh, and I forgot this very important middle part. So let's get Doug's moving around, <laughs> racing around. This center island I use all the time. Usually I like to keep the top of this clear so that I have a spot to bring in the new stuff as it comes in but also to take stuff out of here when I need to. We film the uh, tutorials, the paid tutorials, we film those downstairs in a film studio and I have to fill up and get the stuff prepped for the tutorials and so I just put them in these uh, bins and just carry them down. I got a big stack of them. My mom was is a elementary school teacher and she had, I don't know where she got them, but she had a whole bunch of these little bins and I use them for that. And I can just haul the stuff down to the studio and then bring it back. And then I can take it from here and put it back where it's supposed to go. 
on this side of the table, this is a uh, uh, sewing table under there, so I can move this stuff off and, and open it up and sew there if I want to. So the drawers in that table are all sewing stuff, thread, needles, that kind of stuff. But the top surface, because I don't sew that often, I have set it up as my um, metal working area. I've got a um, granite or a uh, what is it? marble tile here so that it's heat proof and I can do my soldering. I've got a soldering block and I can um, make head pins and that kind of thing here and I'm safe and I'm away from everything else. I can also, I've got my dapping tools here and my um, disc cutters and stuff and a bucket of tools that I use just in this area. And then down here, because it's a proper height and there's a perfect little corner for it and I can swing my chair around when I'm working, is my polishing station where my jewel tool is. Um, normally I don't have these items here or I can move them out of the way. But um, I have my jewel tool with all of its uh, little uh, accessories here. Then I've got a, a vise that I can move out of the way. And all of my jewel tool things are in this area and contained and I can just polish right here right next to my other surface. So um, I hope that was helpful and gave you a bunch of ideas. Um, really focus on finding zones for your, uh, for your particular needs. Maybe you just have a small area, you don't have this crazy amount of supplies, and all you really need is just a rolling tower that you put tools in one drawer, clay in the next, you know, beads in the other one. Or maybe you have a huge room that you have need to have certain areas. But just if you keep your stuff in certain zones, you'll be able to find it, you'll be able to use it, and you'll be able to create and then clean up after. So I hope you like that and hope you enjoyed my um, little studio here. Now you know what I do and where I work. And if you did like this video, do let us know. If you have suggestions or if there's anywhere in here that you would like a closer look at in a future video, do leave those in the comment section below. And don't forget, we have a great resource over at polymerclaytutor.com where you can use the search box and find answers to all of your polymer clay questions. We'll see you next time and bye for now. Mm -hmm.